welcome to a new video and this is the first video on new releases for 2022 for those of you who follow my channel you'll know that last year i did 13 new release videos uh, covering approximately 50 new albums and i'm committed to trying to do the same this year uh i got off to a bit of a slow start uh, but some of you might also have seen I had three end of year videos regarding 2021, which took up quite a lot of my time. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get started with the first of uh, 2022 new videos. And just to explain, these are really brief snippets. They're like brief trailers. They're not going into any great depth. They're describing the artist briefly for those that might not know. And then it's straight into tracks and comment from me. Uh, so it won't take that long uh, to do the mini review. So let's get started. So let's kick off then with the first of the new release videos for 2022. And I'm going to review briefly, it has to be said, an album called Dawn FM by an artist called The Weekend. Not The Weekend, The Weekend. Now, I am aware that this artist uh, is highly regarded in a sort of electronic soul circles, and I'm not exactly a, a, a great expert in this genre, uh, but I thought I'd, I'd take a look at him uh, to find out what all the uh, enthusiasm about. He is, anyway, Abel Makanon Atesfai, um, and he's now uh, 32 years of age. He's known professionally as The Weeknd. He's from Canada. He's a singer, songwriter, and producer. He's known for his sonic versatility and dark lyricism. His music explores escapism, romance, and melancholia, often inspired by personal experiences. And he began his recording career in 2009 uh, using YouTube to release music. Uh, and then his 2015 album, Beauty Behind the Madness, was hugely successful. Uh, first number one album on the US uh, Billboard charts. And uh, he's uh, been selling lots of records. <coughs> Dawn FM is his fifth album and it came out i think on the second and i've given it a couple of spins and uh i'm gonna go through it now this music is what we would describe as uh, electronic ronk funk soul type music with r and b thrown in and a bit of spoken word and synth wave whatever that is and disco Seems to cover every every corner of that. Uh, but anyway, let's get on to the track list. Up with the title track, which is a shimmering synth symphonic number uh, with spoken word, uh, which replicates uh, the late night DJs as they transmit their uh, thoughts and feelings, whilst uh, others, listeners that is, uh, are usually working. Um, I thought it created quite a nice mood, actually. Gasoline's up next, very much a disco synth butte. A lot of production on here, though. And then How Do I Make You Love Me uh, it has got a lot of bass tones that tend to drown the beats a bit. The R&B vocals are very standard contemporary. And there's a panting out outro, which I guess uh, uh, means something. Uh, and it segues into Take My Breath, which is a five and a half minute piece, a more urgency here and with the riff, uh, the lead vocals and back, back, backing vocals feed off each other, it's cues creating a classy shine to the disco funk rhythm that feeds into the hypnotic synth sound. It sounds a bit 80s like to me, but as I say, I ain't no expert. Sacrifice tunes in next, it's very much got, I think, influenced by Michael Jackson as it swaggers uh, off the wall, comes to mind. A Tale by Quincy reflects on uh, 
Quincy Jones, who's also very involved with this artist. It's got some spoken word that delivers uh, some realities on life. And then Out of Time uh, continues that smooth R&B soul swing with strings to wrap the mood. Uh, it steps up with DJ impersonation Jim Carrey. I don't know why he was in here anyway. Then some rap filters through with Here We Go. Uh, sounded a little bit like Babyface, an artist I did uh, grab uh, some attention from uh, back at the turn of the millennium. Uh, and then moving down, uh, is there someone else? Uh, very much middle of the road R&B here. Uh, it's the wallowing in boy-girl sort of angst desire. Very ballady, quite pleasant though, and uh, star starry eyes uh, sort of uh, moves through, and then we get to every angel is terrifying. The synths glide over this one. Uh, it's very futuristic, uh, and uh, it almost had some sort of Mike Oldfield uh, back in the mix. Uh, very much an advert for electronically manufactured cliched sort of music um there are a few other tracks but you're gonna have to listen to the whole album if you want to catch them um uh well i i enjoyed it uh it's not the uh major impact that i thought it might be um as i say i'm not really very experienced with this genre it's the sort of album that i'd put on maybe once in a while maybe a couple of times a year. Um, it's, I'm not going to be rushing to hear it. It's beautifully produced, and he obviously is very good at what he does. Um, it's just not really up my street. But anyway, that's the first one, Dawn FM. It is called Brightside by the Lumineers. They're an indie folk rock duo from Denver, Colorado. Wesley Schultz and Jeremiah Freights. This is their fourth offering. I gave it a very brief listen. Um, it's pleasant enough stuff. The title track opens up. Very uneventful, though. AM radio. Nice acoustic intro here. Promises more with piano that enables this folk rock piece to have more impact. Where we are, uh, uh, Bert leads into birthday. More than a nod to 70s singer-songwriters here. It's got a jointy sing-along feel. Sounded a little bit like Loud and Wine on April 3rd, but maybe my ears are uh, causing me trouble. And then Big Shot uh, here. More loud than I thought. Uh, I liked it, though. It's got some petite, nice guitar mix uh, of the acoustic with the electric. And there's a nice chorus. A few more uh, tracks on it, but I won't cover it here. The briefest reviews, uh, and I'll probably come back to uh, Indie Folk Rock. Very nice. Brightside, The Lumineers. Offering then on this uh, first uh, video of 2022 new releases. This is a band called The Wombats. Uh, familiar with the name, but not this band. Formed in Liverpool, 2003. The band's lineup has consisted mainly of Matthew Murphy on lead vocals, guitar, and keyboards, Tord Orf Orvalan Knudsen, who's obviously Scandinavian, he's on bass, keyboards, and backing vocals, and Dan Haggis plays the drums and also keyboards with some backing vocals. The album in question, Fix Yourself, Not the World, very alternative rock, it's their fifth offering, very literate lyrics. Uh, that uh, describe self-loathing and allusions to substance abuse are married to the group's post-punk groves. And it's uh, got a 90s-style Britpop feel uh, with some of the hooks. Murphy is the talent behind the lyrics, and they mesh perfectly with the sounds. I'm going to go through this uh, album a uh, few tracks. I have to say that I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it's... Uh, Certainly going to be a, a regular listen for me. So let's get down to that track uh, listing. Started with Flip Me Upside Down. This is very much Brit pop. The bass runs hit the right spots from the off. And then this car drives all by itself. A catchy beat and enough going on to keep you interested. If you ever leave, I'm coming with you. 
has a punchy pop beat, very zany vocals, sounding a bit like punk, pop, uh, uh, the feel to it, that is. Ready for the high. Uh, blur, I thought blur, and I thought blur again. Uh, very much the third album by Blur. You know, fuzzy beat and then high pitched vocals bridges into, and then uh, Oasis almost looms on the horizon, meeting those fuzzy guitars, and it swings into a beatlish, lazy rhythm. Very strong track. Method to the Madness is next up. This is a stylish, slow ballad, and the vocals did dominate a little bit. It bridges into some quickening rock beat but it never reaches a crescendo. And then people don't change people time. Sorry, people don't change people. Time does. Nice guitar intro here, smooth beat, and very much a favourite. And then uh, let's move on. Everything I love is going to die. Uh, depressing, isn't it? Work, And then uh, towards the end, I uh, missed a few tracks. Uh, uh, Worry, which has a, an upbeat... A bouncy pop lick and the title track which uh, sends us in, in into I guess uh, a stone sleep it's certainly got a psychedelic haze to it with the guitars pianos and the vocals all meshing together uh, as we go off into the distance I've got a bit of a scratch from mosquitoes uh, yeah we have them here every day and they're a bloody nuisance uh, sprays creams and everything doesn't uh, keep them out and you have to put up with them biting you uh anyway uh back to the music yeah i enjoyed this uh and i think uh alt rock progressive rock psychedelic rock fans will also do so though so let's remind ourselves it's called uh fix yourself then the world and it's by the wombats this is the fourth offering. I think it's probably going to be the last one, although I'm not adding up the uh, time sequences on this as I have another scratch. This is called The Boy Named If, and it's the latest uh, uh, offering by Elvis Costello and the Imposters. I found out who the Imposters were. Uh, I should have known this, but they're actually the attractions, less uh, uh, Bruce... Uh, Thomas uh, and uh, <laughs> so uh, it's basically because he got sacked or he went off in a tiff in the 90s this would you believe it f uh, following his arrival onto the music scene in 1977 would you believe it with my aim is true this is his 32nd studio album if this guy is prolific and he treats the traditional rock quartet uh, as the ideal medium for this offering. Uh, it's delicate, it's concise, it's witty, and it really does rock. Uh, Streamlined band-type album, minimum of arrangements, uh, which is quite uh, different from uh, Costello's uh, recent offerings, where he has perhaps overdone those arrangements. It's back to those early attraction days uh, and uh, I really loved it. And so I'm going to go through some of the tracks now. Uh, I've listened to this, I think, three times. Uh, so I, I'm not that familiar with it, but it's on this review anyway. So let's get on with it. Farewell starts. It's a standard rocker. Then we got the title track where Steve Neve uh, uh, introduces that slow sort of organ that was typical of this year's model. Uh, weird distorted strings as well at the outro. Then Penelope, Penelope Halfpenny. It's a jocular music hall-like song, uh, which gives you a feeling of trust in what you're doing. The difference skips out of the ski, ski, ski out of the speakers, it's got a great rhythmic hook. And what if I can, can't give you anything but love? It sounds like it was fully transported from the 1980 albums. Uh, it's got a vicious guitar break as well, uh, which is, I was glad to hear. And then track six, uh, Paint the Red Rose Blue, uh, is an impassioned pop ballad 
a serene piece of music, classic Ostello, uh, Costello. Then uh, moving on, Mistook Me for a Friend uh, could all, almost have been an outtake on this year's model. It's fiery in parts and Naive's piano leads us to the final uh, few bars. Another beauty, my most beautiful mistake. Uh, neat feminine harmonies on here. It's got Beatles style guitars, very much a ballad from that era. Uh, but it's got a bit of attitude and it's another strong song. And then uh, Magnificent Hurt, another steamy rock, rocker with some great pumping audience or organ, very chaotic in parts. And then uh, the man you love to hate sways in like we're in a bar room uh, and it's got a musical kinks-like feel. Some great piano from the Eve again. The politics feeds through on this one as well at the outro. Uh, and it reminded me of uh, the entertainer, uh, Laurence Olivier, that sort of feel. Uh, Beauty is track 11, The Death of Magic Thinking. The rolling drums from Pete Thomas are a standout here and they greet this pulsating punky rock piece. Uh, it's another piece of classic Costello uh, punk style uh, rock music. And then we're into lounge jazz French style for Trick Out the Truth. There's some cute acoustic guitar here and an accordion and a glop glockenspiel. But it has a very seaside feel to it. Uh, God's Comet rang a bell to me as well. And then we've got the sweet ballad to end, Mr. Crescent. Well, for free listens, I'm well impressed with this piece of work. It caught me much quicker than uh, the album uh, in 2020, uh, Hey Clockface. Uh, this is more like it. And it's going to be a strong contender for my end of the year top 10. Please, anybody who likes Costello will love this. So that uh, is my fourth offering. And that wraps up the first video uh, new releases uh, for 2022.